Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Pokemon Blue. And uh, in the last episode, we got ourselves balls deep into the Rocket Game Corner, which depending, depending, depending on how far your balls uh, hang down, that could be a particularly uh, long sense of being uh, balls deep in something. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Oh boy, this is not starting off on a good note. However, I really don't understand these arrow tiles. Like, whose fucking idea was it for this? Like, I get that they're using it as, as you know, like a deterrent for invaders or something, but like, imagine if you were just a dude that works in this place and you're just like, oh god, I gotta go down to the basement again, I don't wanna have to go through all this just to get to the elevator. And you go and like, step on it and like, it doesn't make you go any faster, like as soon as you jump onto the damn thing, you just start spinning around at the same speed that you walk at. And so, like, all that's gonna do is just, like, give you whiplash, and people are gonna start, like, profusely, you know, puking their guts out on the floor, and then someone else is gonna come in wanting to go, you know, do their route, and they're gonna slip on it, and they're gonna fall, and they're gonna break their wrist trying to brace, you know, their fall, and someone else is gonna, like, snap their back in half, and someone else is gonna, like, break their neck tripping over the pile, because obviously you're not gonna be able to see it. Then you're gonna have giant lawsuits, and then the entire Team Rocket organization is just gonna go bankrupt and disband right away and then whoever whoever ends up having to you know be the guy that answers for that design flaw is gonna be like yeah yeah all right all right it seemed like a good idea at the time you know I was thinking maybe if there were gonna be like weird ten-year-olds that broke in or <laughs> that decided to break in here by finding the hidden button behind the poster that no one was supposed to know about that you know maybe we'd have a chance to get away with this thing and uh, I guess I, I guess I really should have uh, thought that one through an extra two or three times, but you know, besides the point. <laughs> so there we have it. We got TM7. Uh, ooh, horn drill. All right. I don't think anybody can learn that one in my party, though. No. I mean, that's kind of more reserved for dudes like uh, Rhyhorn, Rhydon. I think the Nidoran family is one that can learn that one since they do have horns on their heads. And then. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Is there anybody else that can learn that? I, I don't feel like there is. Maybe like, maybe like Lapras. Does Lapras have a horn on its head, or am I just like slowly slipping into dementia? I, I don't know. It's not important. The, the point is, I can't learn it. I'll have to go put that in the old bank at some point. Did we already? Wait a minute. Did we already go over this way? We did already go over this way. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> See, this is the problem. Like, I'm just. I. I I'm sick and so just like parts of my brain, even though I'm watching it unfold directly in front of myself, my brain's like, dude, dude, you gotta go back over, there might still be something over there, even though you were just there, like it, it it's totally still waiting for you, man. And uh, I think it's the congestion, like all, all the phlegm is just like crowding my, my, uh, my brain and no way it's working, you know, and so the only thing I can request is that you take these broken wings and learn to fly again learn to live so free and when we hear the voices sing oh what is it the, 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 the book of love will open up and let us in <laughs> the most 80s sounding thing that's ever happened the when we hear the voices sing the book of love will open up and let us in <laughs> you couldn't be any more 80s sounding than that <coughs> Good old Mr. Mister. It took me a really long time to, to learn who actually did that song. Because for the longest time, I was actually under the impression that it was somebody completely different than who it actually was. Oh boy. Um, see, like, when I... When I... Oh boy. Here's the thing. Like, when I was a little kid, I used to listen to that song all the time with my mom in her, uh, in her really disgusting, like, cream-colored Ford Taurus which was the shit, by the way. Totally had that thing bumping in that tape deck, like, on repeat all the time. But, um... And so I hear it all the time there, but, like, I would never... I was never able to, like, remember exactly, you know, who did the song. And then, you know, like, late middle school years, you know, going into high school, I, um... I finally was able to have access to illegal, you know, music downloading software things like, uh, you know, Napster and, 
and iMesh and uh, BearShare and Kazaa and LimeWire and, and all of those. Um, I think FrostWire was one that came out a lot later. Um, and I was able to download music then. And so I put that thing into, into the old uh, search engine there. And, uh, and there's obviously like a billion different ones that come up with a whole bunch of different names. And the one that I, the one that I saw a lot for some reason was, uh, it said Broken Wings by Richard Marks, which I now know that Richard Marks had literally zero affiliation <laughs> with the creation or performance of that song at all. Um, but that's the one that I downloaded because I saw a number of those there. And, uh, and it was definitely the right song, and so I, I went for many, many, many years not realizing that Richard Marks was not the dude uh, or group that did that song, and it was totally Mr. Mister, um, which was actually, you know, frontlined by, uh, by Richard Page, I believe his name was. And, uh, and so I fi when I finally figured that out, I was just like, oh my god, I've been fed lies for years! And then I was okay. I mean, it, it was a pretty trivial thing. It wasn't like, you know, I found out that the government's been, you know, totally slowly uh, nickel and diming my bank account to death for the last, like, 17 years and Tabanero's dead. Which, who knows, maybe they have been, and I'll find out that information and I'll have the exact same response. Oh my god! <laughs> Please let me get one of these off. Come on, wreck his shit. Just do it. Get all up inside the butthole, there it is. That man has gone down. All right. He's like, you went up in the butt. That's my job. <laughs> you have violated the contract. That I did not know that that was part of the part of the deal. All right. Well, at least only Tabanero, you know, took took the, the the nose dive there. Otherwise, things were looking pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, as far as the whole potion deal goes, not looking quite as good. So we're gonna be down to one. Hopefully, though, I mean, we got like another full floor of these weird uh, little arrow tiles here. The possibility we might come up on another one somewhere. Maybe, maybe this is too. It's a hyper. Hey, there we go. See, my prayers have been answered. <laughs> Intruder alert! That's probably the most normal thing that that anybody in wearing a Team Rocket uniform has said so far. <laughs> we have Intruder alert, and I think the other guy said, "What are you doing down here?" Those are easily the most normal things. Grimer, huh? <laughs> surprise! Oh, the surprise is all mine, my friend, as I'm going to wear down your defenses and then burn you to absolute smithereens as you pound me and take me halfway down. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Okay, that was unsus- that was, um, that was not expected. That was, uh, was not expected at all. I- I thought- you know, giving him a tail whip and then and then throwing some fire at his open mouth, I would have done at least a little more than that. But I was sorely mistaken. Which is even more reason why we absolutely need to get our hands. Of course the Thunderbolt goes, but that is exactly why we have Thundershock. The less effective little brother. It always seems to come in when you need it. Perfect. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I totally forgot. I drew the biggest blank ever. So we're just gonna go right away from that, and that's whatever it is. Dude, that skull and crossbones is so tight. It's just weird that, uh, apparently, I didn't even know it, um, apparently, the, uh, the skull and crossbones thing wasn't even supposed to be on the top of his head like that. I guess in, like, every, every Pokemon game after that, the skull and crossbones is actually underneath the face. So, uh, there's some, there's some, uh, vital information for your everyday life, and now you know. Oh, you know, I found out about a really cool game last night, and for some reason I, I totally thought that I had, like, dreamt it up. Because I, I, uh, it was late last night and I couldn't sleep, and so I, I jumped on to, uh, jumped on to YouTube, because that's where everybody's gotta go when you're struggling for stuff like that. And, uh, I came across and somebody that I follow really heavily all the time on YouTube is, uh, Northern Lion. The guy does Let's Plays, does a pretty good job, I would say. And, uh, he and one other guy that he does regular videos with. They were playing a game called, uh, what was called GeoGuessr. And I think that that might be one of the coolest game ideas ever. <laughs> it's so awesome. Like, for me, I, I love, I love, you know, like, guessing games. And this is, like, literally one of the ultimate guessing games in the world. <laughs> because it's using the world, believe it or not. 
And basically what it is, is if you decide to play it with a friend, which I think really is the best way to do it, I have an antidote, thank god, um, is basically what happens is you and, uh, and, and, you know, unidentified friend or flying object or whatever it's gotta be, um, you guys basically, okay, so we need to figure out where we're going here. We just go to the elevator? I thought we had to have a lift key for that. I guess we don't. See, I do need to have a key. So where's where's the damn key? Who's got it? Button, button, who's got the button, you know? Is it just one? Do like one of these guys drop it? Maybe it's this guy. Maybe he drops it. Well, he doesn't know where the self scope is. Somebody's got to have a key here. Take the elevator to see my boss. Well, you know, I'd love to do that, but I totally can't. Oh, I know where it is. Okay, we got to go up a little bit more. Yeah. Anywho, so basically what the, the premise of this whole thing is is, uh, let me go down further here. Aha! Alright, see, so here's here's the second round of this. Yeah. And there's actually a rare candy in here, too, if I remember correctly, down towards the bottom of it. Basically, what happens is, um, is it will randomly place you and the person you're playing with on a random spot on the map. It just, you know, any, any random place. And it is your job to try to figure out where you're at. And the only and it's they're using like Google Image. So you just like you start going, you know, up and down streets trying to, you know, figure out, you know, like street signs or like general locales and uh, you know, trying to decipher, you know, different languages and stuff, and you try you try to pinpoint a spot on the map where you think you are, and uh, based on how close you are, then uh, you're awarded points at the end of the whole thing. And I think that is such a cool idea for a game. I was I watched a, a couple episodes of these two guys playing it, and uh, it's really cool. <laughs> it's just awesome. They'll just put you down somewhere, and you just start going like, up and down the street. And and uh, there was one instance where a guy, where one of the two guys, was able to find out, like within, like he was, he found the exact street that that he was supposed to be on. Like he was within, like just maybe like like an intersections difference of where the of where uh, they were of where you know like what city they were in it was so wild man <laughs> it was it was one of the cooler things that I've seen we're gonna use the rare candy on uh, top and arrow when we got the opportunity here so let's uh, let's bring out drain we haven't really had the opportunity to use drain very much since we you know just got him but yeah dude I think it's a great idea I personally I I would I would love to play it on this channel um, Maybe at some point. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fool around with it a little bit just to see, you know, if it's if it truly is worth uh, worth my time. Let's uh, let's uh, let's let's ice this uh, this little sandbag here. Oh yeah, I've had effectively enough of you. I just want to. I like. I would just. All I want to do is I want to. Um, I just really, really. Yeah, we'll leave him out here. I really want to freeze one of those radicates with this ice beam. I want to freeze him, and I want to, I want to also like take him home after I win the battle. I want to put him on my kitchen counter, and I want to take just like one of those really nice, uh, like the ones they advertise on TV, like those copper frying pans, you know, the one that you can, uh, you know, you can cook, you can fry eggs in, and it'll slide right on out of there, and nothing will ever burn inside of this because it's super special material that no one's ever heard of before. That's the most innovative thing that's ever, you know, graced the face of the earth. I'd like to take one of those. And, uh, I would love nothing more. Is there not? Aha! There you are. There's that rare candy. Yeah! I knew you were there. You can't hide from me. And now that I have found you, it shall be consumed. Alright. Good stuff. Very good stuff. See, he's coming along. He's slowly becoming, uh, what we would loosely call, uh, useful here. Now we gotta go, like, all the way around to get back down there again, I think. Um, I wanna take one of those. I wanna take one of those special frying pans. And I wanna put that thing right in the right spot. And I just wanna load up and take the biggest, like, David Ortiz, like, like, just load up and take the nice baseball, you know, step right into it and just unload on that Radicate statue and just blow it to smithereens. 
I'm sure, you know, Pokemon PETA would be extremely displeased with that, but you know what, I'd tell them, you know what, it's Eradicate, and they're like, oh no, it's totally cool. <laughs> we totally get it, man, we hate them too, like, there, there's really, there's really uh, no, no reason for them to even exist. So, you know what, you want to destroy them, by all means, be my guest, be my guest. Put the magic to the test. That's not even the real words, I don't think, but I don't really care. It's just what it is. Alright, we're gonna move here. I think uh, the guy holding the keys to the van are right here. So we're gonna we're gonna give him we're gonna give him his uh, his just dues. TM2, isn't that like mega kick? I don't know. I know TM1's mega punch, but what is this? Razor Wind. Hmm. Razor Wind would be um That'd be what for like a like a flying Pokemon? It sounds it it sounded like a grass move, but I was thinking of Razor Leaf. Uh, Razor Wind, I think, would be good for like Frank Dukes. If if that indeed, um... <laughs> did he just say the elevator doesn't work? Who has the lift key? <laughs> this guy totally is the one that has the key. Oh, you're trying to divert me away from the fact. Like, what if he like his sprite comes out and he's just got like a giant like ring of keys on his on his waist? He's like lift key. I don't I don't know who has the lift key. Like, but Mister. You have a you have a, a giant ring of keys on your on your waist, and one of them says lift key. Oh no, that's 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 for uh, that's for the gym. It's for the the Team Rocket gym. It's called the lift room. But this one it, it it says the lift key for the elevator that goes to the boss, not not for the gym. <laughs> He's like, but uh, oh. God damn it! <laughs> Come on, Tabanero. you gotta you gotta do it. I guess I could, like, a, a, a nickname for Tabanero could be Tab, which I, uh, I actually have a relative named Tab. Her name's actually Tabrina, but, uh, she goes by Tab. A very unique name, by the way. I don't think I know anybody else named Tabrina, now that I think about it. Um, going with that Zubat action, huh? That's alright. Yeah, let's throw down. And by throw down, I mean not with you at all. We're gonna, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring, uh, Ratman Carruthers out here, and he's gonna bring you down. Um, but yeah, you have the nickname be Tab, and then totally, uh, have the, uh, the beverage of choice be a Tab. Is, is Tab like an energy drink, or is it a soda? I see those things all the time in grocery stores, and I don't think that I can recall a time that I have ever put one of those into my mouth. Ever. But yet, they're still hanging around. <laughs> oh no! I dropped the lift key! <laughs> Because somehow by, somehow by losing a Pokemon battle, that would cause you to, to drop the key to the elevator. <laughs> Inside of a Pokeball, nonetheless. So that's, uh, that's what that is. Alright, so I'll bet that guy's got something important on him. We're gonna go find out for ourselves. Um, okay, let's, let's go this way. I gotta make my way all the way to that place again. Well, you know what, we're probably not gonna do that. Um... I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna do that, but we're not gonna do it right now. When we come back, my friends, on the next installment of Let's Play Pokemon Blue, we're gonna head down this weird little, uh, serpentine corridor, and then we'll head to the elevator. Unless the elevator's down here, but I don't think that it is. But I could be wrong. So until then, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching, and go drink a tab and tell me what it tastes like, because I don't know if I'm ready to make that plunge yet. You guys take care. Let me know. I expect a full report in the morning.